Hi, I'm Nelty Linker. I'd like to welcome you to my garden. It's a cottage garden. I plant it, the birds plant it, and we just keep moving things around. As the sun moves, I move the plants. Well, welcome to it. This plant is just beginning to come back. It gets knocked down every winter. This is uh, Thumbergia grandiflora. About August, it'll have clusters of very pale, beautiful orchid colored blue flowers. When you see it in Logie's catalog, you see this little tiny pot. Well, it'll grow 20 feet a summer. So you want to put it where you can sort of control it, but it is a, it's a beautiful um, uh, hanging of blue, blue flowers. It's, it, it's a beautiful plant. But that's, this is the goldenrod. I had it and it was being fertilized, so it really looks spectacular. And I had a, a person walk down the street and said, oh, what is that plant? And I said, well, do you live in the country? Where do you live? She said, oh, I don't live out there. I says, well, that's plain old goldenrod, but it's been fertilized. <laughs> and it was very impressive because it was a big flower. I want to tell you about these two maples. I rescued those from Lowell's when I was at Atlanta. I crossed a six-lane highway. I just couldn't resist not going to Lowe's. They had them for $25. So I bought one of each, had them under my arm, and ran back across the six-lane highway to the motel. We were there for a medical meeting. So you'll do anything to buy a plant. These plants here are gone, but this was the Byzantine gladiola, which is a purple, which bloomed. I got those from the Hayward Washington House when I was working there. And uh, this was a mass of pink blooms about a month ago. This is the Louisiana flock growing up among the daylilies, which are fighting to be shown. This is a, this is a member of the uh, shrimp plant. It, people call it a pineapple plant. It's actually of the shrimp, shrimp plant family. This, these are in pots, so they have stayed pink. I was scared to put them in the ground. This is a very unusual tipped blossom right there with a little white edging. Um, behind here are the orchid cactus. They're through blooming, but they have a magnificent bloom. Not a very pretty plant, but really spectacular bloom. These camellias right behind you are camellias that I grafted probably 40 years ago. They, um, some of them are my favorites. If I walked down the street and saw some I liked, I would snip a piece. You should always travel with a plastic bag, wet paper towel, and scissors when you travel. That's a, that's a combine. This hair, not blooming now, but is a white single uh, banksia. It looks like a fairy rose when it's blooming. And it's a, it's a single and it's a white. That's very pretty when it's blooming. Over here, I have just sort of pulled everything out the greenhouse and I just, I just stack them here for the summer. A little of everything. You know, if I see a plant I don't have, I probably pick it up and everything in the yard says, watch out. You better hang on to your spot because another plant's coming. This is a camellia that I'm heirlaying several pieces from some of the family. This is Dr. Paul Sanders. My mother registered this one. It grew in her yard. It's a big pink. And if it stays consistent for several years, you can register the camellia. So I'm, I'm trying to airlay some off to give to the kids. That's Dr. Paul Sanders. Hopefully it takes. <laughs> Air layering is a good way to get a good sized plant. You can air lay a lot of different things, roses and all, but camellias are air layer really well. You take, you take and skin it for about an inch, skin it all the way around, take pliers and skin it so that you have nothing but the, uh, get all the cameron bark off. You put sphagnum moss that the, you can make a big, big ball real tight and squeeze real tight, wrap it around it with a little rutone in it. You wrap the aluminum foil on it, and a lot of times you spray it so the birds won't pick it. And you leave it there about five or six months, and you hopefully will have a camellia. But that's what air laying is. This is a hypericon, which is good for mental health. If you ever feel depression, you just come out here and chew a few leaves. This is a Kakuma ginger, which is, comes up with just the flower, and then these get very tall, and you have your endless uh, hydrangea right there. The bees love this plant. I don't know whether I can pronounce it, but it's a Dicroi Febrophagor. I'm not sure where I got it from. I may have gotten it at the Garden Festival many years ago. There were plants that brought in there, somebody who'd been to China bringing in plants, and they brought some of their plants. But the bees love this, and it's 
just growing beauty. It's part of the hydrangea family. And um, it really showed with the gold Ioannis behind it. Uh, this is a very busy corner. I have a little pool here. And those are gingers that are coming up there. That's the orange file ginger back there. Uh, it's just, my yard is a, is a cottage garden. The, the birds plant things. When they want to move something, they pick up a seed and move it. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Okay, I have about four cores in here and then a bunch of goldfish. This gets a lot, a lot of sun in the afternoon. Right now it's kind of shaded. But in the spring, above it is a massive Chinese snowball, which is a macrocephalum, rubber and macrocephalum. So this is a complete white scene of big blooms. And of course, they drop into the pool, which makes a big headache trying to keep them clean. But um, I feed my fish every day, and they're just sitting there waiting for me every morning to come out. I was sitting on my porch, and there's a, a little green grass here, what little there is, and I said, well, you know, I believe I could put a little bit of a bed there. So I marked it out and started planting it, and usually any new plant that comes in, a pot plant, frequently ends up here. It's nothing that is regular. I've got daylilies, I've got uh, aquila, which is your columbine, your native columbine. It's a little of everything, and the pot plants, that's the copper leaf plant, which they had a big one of those at the um, plantation this year. So this is just sort of a catch-all, but I was sitting on the porch, I said, I think I could put a plant in the middle of that yard, and that's what I did. This is one of my favorite roses. It came from Frances Parker in Beaufort. It was a rose that was on her husband's farm, plant, home site, and she propagated it, and it just blooms off and on all summer, and it's just this, one of my favorites. It's a very, I love red, and the summer red is very colorful. I'm so glad y'all have come to my garden today. As you see, most of these things you can get from someone else by rooting, cutting, sharing, because if you share, if yours die, you know where to go to get it back again. So always be willing to look for new things to put in your garden. Thank you.